Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and we're starting our six-part series on box modeling. Now, you might ask, well, why in the heck do you need six parts for box modeling? Well, it's just so stinking fun. And a lot of the industry, a lot of the technicians in 3ds Max use specifically just box modeling to do a lot of stuff. So it's very useful, and it's kind of an introduction to more advanced techniques. So really important, we're going to stick with this all the way, and let me show you what we're going to have for you during this six-part series. We're going to do an introduction to shapes and objects. We're going to discuss what a shape is, what an object is, and how they're composed. We're going to review keyboard commands, show you the old ones that we showed in the last series, and some new ones. We're going to show you some new poly commands, uh, extrusion and beveling and uh, camphoring. We're going to build a simple house uh, from a box. Now, this is not the way you really want to build an architectural house. We actually have a whole series on that. Uh, but we're going to show you how to really use that box modeling to your advantage. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about exporting to Collada in 3ds Max for Paper Vision. And then we're going to build a jet plane. Uh, everyone loves to build jet planes. We're going to take that jet plane into uh, Paper Vision and fly it around. I'm just going to give you an application to do that with. And then we'll show you a few other tricks and uh, tips to using Paper Vision and 3ds Max. So there we have it. Let's go ahead and get started with the series. So before we start box modeling, let me give you the basics the difference between a shape and an object. In 3ds Max, a shape is 2D and an object is 3D. But in order to edit both, you need to get to what's called its sub-object level. So your shapes and objects are made up of different components. Let me explain that to you. In order to edit a uh, spline, for example, which is a 2D shape, you're going to use an edit spline modifier. And for a 3D object, you need an edit mesh modifier. These are composed of what's called vertices and segments and edges and polygons. And in order to see what that means, let's go to our spline. So I'm hit Control P to pan over here. And I'm looking at a spline or shape in 3ds Max. So let's go ahead and click on that. Let me hit Q to get out of that. And this spline is composed of vertex or vertices, segments, and the spline itself. So if I click on vertices, you can see there's these points in space, and they're connected by what's called a segment. And I click on that, and that's red right here. So when you have many vertices that connect many segments, then you have the total of that is called a spline. And in order to edit one, you've got to get down on that level. You have to convert it to an editable spline. Then, for example, I clicked on uh, vertex here. I could click on that. Then I could hit the W command, for example, and you can see I could actually move that in space. See that? So now I'm in, the, in that uh, sub-level, and I can begin to change and modify my uh, spline. Same thing for editable poly. Let's go take a look at that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and hit Q to get off of that, and click here. I'm going to hit my Control P to pan over, and here's my polygon. Let's uh, hit Q and click on the polygon. The 3D shape is composed of vertices, edges, and polygons. Let's go ahead and click on vertices, and you can see in blue all the vertices are highlighted. And the vertices between each vertex is an edge. So click on edge, for example, and you can click on that, and you can see in red you see the edge. Now, in 2D, edges are called segments, and in 3D they're called edges. So uh, now the polygons, let's click on that, for example, that's the actual face pieces right there. And so these sub-levels allow me to edit this box and do box modifying. For example, if I want to convert this to an editable poly, I just right-click and choose Convert to Editable Poly. And once I do that, I'm ready to begin editing. For example, I could hit Shift-E to extrude. There you go. And then I could hit um, R to, in a sense, shrink. And you can see now I'm starting to edit my uh, polygon. So that's kind of an introduction to the bases or sub-objects of uh, uh, editing boxes in 3ds Max. Just totally essential to the whole process is this idea of getting to the sub-level and putting a modifier on to do that with. So we're ready to go. Let's start box modeling. Now, if you watch my previous series on 3ds Max, I talk a lot about what's considered to be the right-left hand combination, where I'm basically working with the left hand with keyboard shortcuts and the right hand with the mouse. And that really increases the productivity of uh, creating objects in 3ds Max. So we're going to review some of those uh, commands and actually show you some new ones. So let's go ahead and uh, bring a, a box out, out on stage. 
and we'll begin working with it. So go ahead here and click uh, New and uh, Create and go to Box and let's bring a box out here in the orthographic a box out now and let's bring a box out here in the orthographic view and bring up a little bit. Now in 3ds Max whenever I right click on any of the controls I can actually get uh, a dialog box and you can see right here I, I want to center this completely so if I just right click on these arrows it actually zeroes everything out and I've actually centered my box. Good, we're good right there. Now first uh, keyboard command here of course is Q to get back onto the uh, selection key right here and I'm at Alt W to open up the screen. There you go. And then Z extends pretty much brings everything into the viewport so I can see it. Now you have these commands we want to review. Uh, P is perspective, L is left, T is top, and B is bottom. Now as opposed to going from uh, viewport to viewport, I could actually do everything in the same viewport. I could hit P for perspective, L for left, T for top, B for bottom, and P for perspective. So I'm back in the perspective view. I want to go ahead and click on that, and I'm going to hit F four to get that edged faces so I can actually see my polygons. So I'm almost ready to go. Let's go ahead and take a look view at some more commands. Uh, there is Q for select. Control A will select everything. Control I will select the inverse and Control D will deselect everything. Uh, we've used all those before and we'll be using them more. So the next set of commands I want to look at are W for translate, E for rotate, R for stretch, X for removes, gives gizmos, and all X for transparency. Let's take a look at that real quick. So if I click on that, hit Q for selection, let's select the cube, and then hit W, and that gives me ability to translate. Um, e gives me ability to rotate. Now if I don't like where I've gone, just hit the right uh, mouse key and it takes you back. And then there's W for, excuse me, R for shrinking. And you can shrink whole or uh, two axes or single axes. Isn't that cool? And then there's X will take the gizmo away, and so if you forget that, just X again to bring the gizmo back. And then Alt X gives you transparency. So if you're working with uh, some uh, resource material and you want to see through it, uh, you will use that Alt X, and Alt X again just toggles you back to where you were. Cool. And let's get Q to go back to that. Let's go to the next set of commands. Real important here is arc rotate, and we want to arc rotate in the sub level. And you're going, what the heck do you mean? So let's go back to that and take a look. If you look at Arc Rotate, you can see there's a number of options here, boxes that you can grab. And uh, this main one is usually what you get in the, the default. And that just Arc Rotates the whole viewport. You want to go to the su sub-level here, and that will allow you to Arc Rotate around uh, different um, uh, selected objects. If I select a vertice, it will rotate around that vertice, or an edge, or a face. Let's go ahead and uh, show you the command for that, and that is Control R gives you Arc Rotate, and just Q will bring you back to where you were. Just a few things about Arc Rotate is that if you uh, hold Alt and the middle mouse, then you'll be able to uh, uh, be able to Arc Rotate. Alt, Alt Control P we've already used is the pan, and Alt Z is Zoom, and Z is Zoom Extends, and Alt W gets you full screen. So we've looked at those before. Just once again, I want to zoom every once in a while. I'll hit Alt Z and get to be able to zoom in, zoom out. Or if you have your mouse, you can just scroll the middle mouse button. So let's hit Q to go back. Good commands to know. Once again, I think the most important here is F4, which gives you the edged faces. F3 will do wireframe, and F9 is render, and Shift Q is quick render as well. Control Z, of course, standard to uh, is. Uh, undo control Y to redo and convert to poly will give you a vertex edge border and polygon which we've already showed you but very important here now is the 7 which give you the polygon count so I'm going to come along here and we hit 7 and you can see there's a polygon count right there in the screen if I come along here for example I'm going to click on uh, hit 2 to grab one of the edges Oh, I see this is not an edible a polygon. Let's right click on this and create, let's select it, right click on it and create an edible uh, polygon, convert to edible poly. We're in polygon mode now, if you open that up you can see vertex, edge, polygon. I can hit uh, numbers will allow me to surf between these. So one is vertex, two is edge, three is border, four is polygon, and five is element. Go back to vertex, let's go to two which is edge. Let's select an edge here. And I'm going to select another edge right here. And then I'm going to come down here in my list and I'm going to hit connect. 
I see we get all of these different um, options when you can get the modifier to so connect here. And what I've done actually put a polygon across there. Let me control R to actually arc rotate that. And you can actually see I've actually stuck uh, a uh, basically a, a intersected these two edges. And we'll be learning more about the command, but you can see I've actually increased my polygon number. If I control Z that to go back, see I've decreased my polygon and vertex number. So just keep this in mind, extremely important for paper vision because you're continually trying to bring the polygon number down. You want low polygon models in paper vision because it decreases the amount of calculations you need to do. Well, that's pretty good. Let's move on a little bit from here. We're going to learn all about poly commands, and this is pretty cool.